All right, now as we continue our baptism lesson in the Liberty Bible Course, as we're now in part four of baptism, you need a King James Bible or your answers will be wrong. We looked at what is baptism, the meaning of baptism. We looked at the manner of baptism, and you can go back and look at the previous videos and the audios. Uh, the message of baptism. Then why should we be baptized? We looked at that. And we gave some examples of fears and baptism and how to overcome it. And then who should be get who should be baptized? We saw that all believers in Christ, and we looked at, you know, babies don't get baptized. We looked at sprinkling and pouring and the other stuff. Now, when should we be baptized? As we now come to today's lesson in Mark 16 16 and we'll go there Mark 16 16 the greater commission than Matthew I say everyone runs to Matthew I run to Mark I like Mark and in John right now moving my way to Mark Mark 16 16 was there but not there. I'm in Luke. Hold on. Mark 16 16. You're probably there and I'm not. It says, He that believeth. Remember, we talked about belief last week. And is baptized shall be saved. We'll stop right there. Mark 16, 16 reveals that belief, believeth, cometh before baptism. As we go to Acts chapter 8, verse 12, we see again, but when they believed Philip's preaching, the things concerning the kingdom of God, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized. We saw last week, and we as we covered today or tonight, that believing, belief, believe comes first before baptism. So after you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you now need to be baptized. In Acts 35 through 37. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus, just like Philip did. Philip preached Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And verse 37 is cut out of your Bibles if you've got a perverted Bible. If you have a Bible that does not have verse 37, if you have a Bible that has a footnote that says verse 37 is not in the original, it is not in the best manuscript, it, excuse me, you need to get a King James Bible. And let me tell you, even King James Bibles have footnotes and marks, marginal notes that this should not be there. My Bible even has. My Bible has a note that says the best authorities omit. omit. Well, the best authorities can go to hell. Because guess what? Verse 37 says, And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. What did the eunuch say? He said, I believe. What did Philip do? He preached Jesus. And now what happens? Preaching first. Belief second. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Philip would not baptize this man until he has confessed that Jesus Christ was his belief. Jesus Christ was the source of his salvation. Jesus Christ is, the, is, his, salva is his Savior. Or he would not have baptized him until he had professed and belief in Jesus. Now, as soon as possible, after we are saved, it says the people who believed in Peter's preaching in Acts 2.38 
through 41 were baptized the same day. Now, I understand there's some places in America, there's some places in the world that that same day may be 5, 10 degrees below zero. Or you may be in a place where there is no water. I've know of a story in uh, that a prison in in another country they had to bring in one of those little kitty swimming pools to baptize the prisoners. The eunuch in Acts thirty five verse two thirty seven was baptized at the first place where there was water. But be no in Acts chapter eight verses thirty five to thirty seven. Even though the water came first, you needed the belief first before the baptism. Many churches out there has the water, but there's no belief. Careful. Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 9, 17 and 18, relates that Saul, who will be Paul, was saved and three days later was baptized. So we see that there's an event where there was the same day. We see an event that the, the, the water was there first before the belief. And we see that Paul, the writer of the New Testament, the apostle to the Gentiles, the, the one that the church is to read his scriptures, his books, and to be based upon, three days later, he was baptized. In Acts 10, 43-48, and we'll go there, one page over, <coughs> excuse me, Acts 10, verses 43, and he gave all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remissions of sin. While Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues, and magnified God, then answered Peter. There was belief. The Holy Spirit has come upon the Gentiles. Now that this has happened, Peter says, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized? which has received the Holy Ghost, salvation, as well as we. The first thing that Peter then says is, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized? Verse 47. Acts 16.25. Acts 16.25. And we'll jump down to verse 30. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Repent and be baptized is not the answer. They said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized. He and all his straightway. They were baptized the same hour that night. After they believed. After they heard the message. Then came baptism. Now there's a common practice today of churches putting off the matter of baptism new converts. They give various reasons for their delay. Which is disobedience. First. Some churches believe that a new Christian should not be baptized immediately in case he did not really repent, in case he was making a false profession of faith. So they decide that it is better to have a trial period before they baptize new converts. Preachers are advocating the view often mock churches who do baptize new converts as soon as possible. Some of them have scoffed. Yea, they are afraid that their converts will not come back again. So they have to baptize them the same service. Listen, you know, you guys baptize right away. We don't do it. You know, you do that because, 
you know, blah, 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 blah. It's foolishness. Picking on another church and, and this wasteful words that you're going to have to be standing before Jesus Christ one day. And listen, you're the one that's mocking the word of God by not doing what the word of God says. I'm going to tell you right now, I just celebrated my birthday. In April 1987, I was saved. I was saved on a Saturday afternoon. Sunday made a public profession of my new faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Went home and told my father about Jesus. And I was baptized the following Sunday. I'm to give enough people time to come to church and, and to see what I'm going to do and be part of my baptism. Mine was seven days. A church should carefully question and deal with people who come forward. Carefully. How many people do I know? Oh, I'm saved. I trust in Jesus. And they haven't a freakish idea what they did. But it is a whole different matter to scoff at a church for baptizing new converts the same hour or day that they get saved. Carefully consider the above verse again. The scriptural example is to baptize new converts as soon as possible. And let me give you the verses again. We're not going to go over them, but for you to write down and look up yourself. Acts 2.38 to verse 41. Especially in verse 41. Acts 8.35 to 37. Acts 9, 1 through 9, 17 and 18. Acts 10, 43 to 48, especially verse 47. Acts 16, 25 to 33, especially 33. To those groups who advocate waiting, the question then becomes, did you know there was a question? How long does a new convert have to wait to prove himself? A week, a month, a year, how long? And who is the proper person, who is the proper authority to say, you're ready? Listen, even a woman can take uh, cupcakes and read the directions and set the oven to proper degrees of temperature. And in a certain period of time, those cupcakes are ready. You don't step in there and say, well, I think I can give a little more time. Or you're going to have black cupcakes when you're not supposed to have black cupcakes. Cupcakes you're not going to enjoy. What about people who make a profession of faith and seem to be faithfully living for God for a year, but then face trials for their faith and drop out of church? Hey, we waited six months for this guy. Okay, he seemed to be good. All right, we baptize him. And then the devil comes along in his life and he falls away like uh, Demas did. Well, that puts a monkey wrench into your thinking that we have to wait to see if they really be a Christian. What about people who serve God with great expectation for two to three years active in church? Leaders bringing, all, bringing others to church. He's got fruit. But then the adversary drop out of church altogether and never darken a church door again to the day he drops dead. What are you going to do? What about Judas? Three and a half years. Even the disciples didn't even know it was him. Matthew 26, 20. Matthew 26, 20. You know, I've seen it like the greatest illustration that a preacher or man in the Bible studying like I am for the ministry is a scale of 1 to 10. And it doesn't matter if one is the worst and ten is the greatest, or you know, one is the best and ten is the worst. Five is always walking with God. And there are so many people that go to one or ten, it's pitiful. 
You got to walk with God in His Word. You can't do a one and you can't do a ten. Matthew 26, 20. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. As they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they, they were exceedingly sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? He tells them about Judas. And they're exceedingly sorry. They're like, oh, is it me? Is it I? Does this mean that you should not baptize a profession believer until he's been saved for at least three and a half years? That's how long Judas walked with Jesus. What makes the purest church? The church that waits the longest to baptize his converts? No. That's what makes a disobedient church. And we go back and write down those scriptures in the book of Acts that we gave you. We are told in scripture when to do it. And it was that same day. It was the three days. That same hour. As soon as possible. Churches use the one statement of John the Baptist. <coughs> and build their doctrine of baptism totally upon it. Upon it being misinterpretation of it. And then totally ignore the multitude of verses in the book of Acts that deal with new converts when they get baptized. Now let's go to Matthew 3, 5 through 9. Let's look at what we're talking about here. You're in dangerous grounds when you're in Matthew, okay? Can I just say that? Matthew is not a church book. I'll tell you why. Matthew, Jesus Christ has not died yet. Jesus Christ has not risen from the grave yet. Jesus Christ is not sitting on the right hand of the Father. Matthew is flavored with Jewish. Matthew is a Jewish book. Verse 5 of chapter 3 in Matthew. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan. And were baptizing of him in Jordan confessing their sins. Oh, amen. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said, it's an old generation of vipers. Hey, amen. That's my kind of preacher. You wicked snakes. Let me give you a hug. God loves you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. You make me sick, preachers. You generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up the children of Abraham. <clears throat> no. John the Baptist was not teaching a waiting period before the baptizing the people at all. He's dealing with the Pharisees. The ones that had Jesus Christ crucified. He was baptizing scores and scores of people right then and there. All of Judea, all the region around about, all were being baptized of John, confessing their sins. In the case of the Pharisees and the Sadducees who came to be baptized, John refused to baptize them because they refused to confess that they had any sin. He's telling them, say, listen, you go and show me that you repented. And then I'll baptize you. You're just over here to find out what's going on. John baptized all who came confessing their sins. It was not that John the Baptist was advocating a waiting period for them. Quite to the contrary, he was refusing to baptize them because they had no clear confession of their sin and their need for a Savior. If they would have shown thus, John would have baptized them immediately, like he was doing with everyone else who claimed. He wasn't giving them a time period. He said, listen, if I'm going to baptize you, 
Prove it to me that you need a Savior. Prove it to me you are confessing your sin. Then I'll baptize you. But I want to see proof in the pudding. Now we come to a little different line of thinking among some people that advocate not immediately baptizing new converts. This group teaches that a person should not get baptized until he understands more about the decision that he just made and more about what baptism means. This is technically called catechism. Did you hear what I said? I said catechism. Does the Bible say that a person must be catechized? I can't even say it. Catechized before he had before he can be baptized? Once again, the answer is no. Just because it's a church doesn't mean it supports the Word of God. Matter of fact, in quite a few churches, the Bible proves to be right and they are wrong. Catechism is not scriptural. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Numbers 911. The example of scripture is that people were to be baptized as soon as possible after they were saved. Again in Acts 8, 35 to 38, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto them Jesus. Preached. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he sat him down for 14 classes for 14.95 with uh, 9.95 shipping and handling. And they went through the book and did everything they did and blah, 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 blah. No, no that's not what it says. There was no classes. He says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the unit, and he baptized him with no classes needed. Why do people make it harder to get baptized than to get saved? It is here that we need to ask the question, is the decision to get baptized more important than the decision to get saved? Of course not. For 1 Corinthians 1.17 says, 1 Corinthians 1.17, For God sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, least the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Paul was not a baptizer. He baptized, but he wasn't a baptizer. He was called to preach. Paul was not teaching that baptism was unimportant, but that the first and foremost calling is to preach the gospel. Go ye all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Unless people get saved, they're going to spend eternity in hell. Baptism cannot save. Baptism is only a picture of what has taken place inside a person's life. It's a testimony. If you view back uh, the audio in the video, this group will not get back. Uh, excuse me. This group will not baptize children who get saved until they get older. Question: How old does a person have to be to get saved? What did Jesus say? That you have to be ten years old, or sixteen years old, or twenty-one years old? What did he say? Again, you got to walk carefulness here. But Matthew 19, 13, 14. Again, we're, we're running to Matthew. Then were they brought unto him little children. Doesn't say an age. That he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked him. But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me. For such is the kingdom of heaven. Now, there's no age given. 
And I can't tell you at what age a, a, a child can be saved. At what age a child should be baptized, baptized after salvation. With a child, you really got to walk, you really got to talk, and you got to really find out what that child believes and not be fooled. Now, when you hear the stories of uh, Bob Jones Sr. being saved at five or six years old, listen, Bob Jones Sr. sat under hell fire and preaching. Man, when, when those preachers were done in those tent revival meetings, even the devil was sitting by the fan trying to get cooled off. Man, you didn't sweat from the summer sun. You sweat from the brimstone and from the sulfur that came up to hell to preaching. You knew what hell was. You knew what the penalty of sin was. And through those preaching, you knew what hell was and sinning. You knew what sin was. And you knew what sin was to God. And with preaching today, brother, you don't get that. The only thing that's been baptized today in the church is the watered-down sermon. Some of these preachers today do a, do a, a Elijah. Order four buckets of water and they're pouring on the wetness of the sermon that's already watered. And you couldn't get fire from God to light it up. They got air conditioning in uh, hell. But there is no age given for a child. That child, if, if that child has with their heart believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and with their mouth has confessed Romans 10, 9, and 10, then you baptize that child as soon as possible. Matthew 18, 3 and 4. And said, Very I say unto you, except you be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter in the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus emphasizes not only allowing children to come to him, but little children. How little? A little enough to know that God is a righteous holy God and when they steal that cookie they didn't steal the cookie from mom and dad they sinned against God what did Peter uh, what did David say when he sinned against Bathsheba and it was revealed to him he said I sinned against God and I can't bring an offering. I can't bring a sacrifice. i got to bring a contrite heart and a broken spirit through the Lord. That he will receive. That's why it's so important you preach the gospel. You preach the right Bible. You get the right message. If a child is old enough to get saved, then that child is old enough to get baptized. If a church refuses to baptize a child that has gotten saved, then that church is a disobedient church. That church is guilty of causing a child to go on in disobedience to the Lord. He said, why do they do that? Remember that scale, 1 to 10? There's a church out there, you know, they will baptize babies on the 1 scale. Well, now they're going all the way over to the 10. Well, we're not going to baptize children at all because we don't want to be part of that church. No. The five is they're saved. The heart belief, the mouth confession. You baptize them. Remember I said you got to walk with the Lord? you got to walk with Scripture? Jesus gave in Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. Matthew 28. I gotta apologize. Allergies are bothering me. All right, Matthew 18, uh, 28, 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spake unto him, saying, "All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go." 
What part of go don't you understand? You know, I know it's a thing down here in Florida. Too many of you sit at a green light. You are the perfect illustration of most Christians today. You sit at the stupid green light and go. Get going. You get me or beeping that man behind you. Then you tell me to look up. I don't see nothing up there. Go! Ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. What do you say? He says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, and baptizing them. Did you get the order? Teaching, then baptizing. If someone came to you and wanted to get saved, amen, glory to God. Would you put them off until a later time? Some of you would. Oh, wait, i got to call my pastor. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to do. <laughs> pastor. And then sometimes, oh, I ain't got the time. Uh, let, let me get my appointment book out. <laughs> You better not do that. You don't know when that person's soul will be going into eternity. Would you say to that one, I will not help you to understand what to do to be saved today? Because I am not sure that you're really sincere yet. I must watch you for a period of time and see if you really do have a repentive heart. And there's probably some idiot out there that will do that. I guarantee it. Probably. Foolish. Can I tell you that would not be the proper response? Why do people make baptism more complex than getting saved? A person need only realize that baptism is a command of God. And that it pictures death to the old life of sin. And a resurrection to a new life lived for Jesus Christ. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. You're you're saved now. Well, I'll tell you what. Don't go out witnessing. Don't read your... Before you do that stuff, wait two or three years. Don't really see you're saved. Does that sound foolish? But that's what you tell these converts with baptism. Wait a little longer. But do you ever tell them, Hey, wait a minute. You're saved? Yeah, I'm saved. Amen. Glory to God. Don't tie for six months. Well, I'm not going to tell them that. Well, doesn't the Bible say you're supposed to give to the Lord? Well, wait six months then. That's what you tell them about the baptism. And you realize that God tells you to be baptized as soon as you're saved, and that if you don't get baptized as soon as you're saved, you're living in disobedience, and whatever you do for the Lord until you get uh, baptized, it's not credited to your account. Now, I understand, like I said, I, I was saved on a Saturday afternoon. Sunday went to the preacher. We arranged for the next uh, Sunday to, for me to be baptized. Listen, it was arranged for me to baptize. It was all set. It was ready to go. I did what God told me to do. I am credited that whole week for passing out tracts for telling people about Jesus. But if you tell someone to wait six months, a year, two years, three years, whatever it is, and they go out doing things. That's not credit. That's disobedience. If a person insists that a new convert needs more knowledge than that to get baptized, then he is saying that he knows more than God. There is no proving or testing time. You know what the proving testing time is? I'm saved. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What do I do next, preacher? Be baptized. I need to be baptized? Yeah. Okay. I want to do it. All right. Next Sunday, we're going to baptize. All right. Preacher, what's that mean? That means you bring your short T-shirts and a towel. We're going to put you underwater, and we're going to raise you up. It's going to be a public testimony of your life in Christ now, and I will explain it to you and all the people the day of your baptism. Okay. Let's do it. Remember, let me, let me go back and give you these references here again. 
Acts 2, 38 to 41, especially 41. Acts 35 to 37. Acts 9, 1 through 9, 17 and 18. Acts 10, 43 to 48, especially verse 47. Acts 16, 25 to 33. There was no teaching. There was no classes. There was no book. They believed after the preaching. And then they were baptized. How more simple can it be? Okay. If on the first day of work, an alarm sounds and the foreman yells, Fire! Follow me. What would you do? I ain't going nowhere until you tell me where the fire is and where exactly where we're going, Mr. Boss. You got to explain to me first. How did the fire start? Who started it? And what's the material burning? Tell me first. I want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. While I wait in the supermarket for me to get all my stuff done with the cashier, I read the magazines. I want to know. How far is the fire station away? How long did it take them to get here? Has anybody lost their life? Are they injured? Are they hurt? Tell me, tell me, tell me. That's not the proper response. A guy yells fire. The only question I got is where do I go? Which direction? How do I get out? You don't ask. You don't wait. You don't learn nothing. You know fire hurts. Is there any way I can help? Any way I can help get other people out. That's the things. When a command is given, you do not stand there and ask foolish questions. You simply obey. There'll be time later to learn what you know the details of the fire. The best thing to do now is obey the Bible. Many things are more made clear as a Christian studies his Bible and grows. You're not going to know this whole Bible in one week. You're not going to know the whole Bible in one year. Matter of fact, you ain't going to know the whole Bible in a lifetime. I don't care if you were saved, honestly saved, and baptized at 10 years old, and you lived to be 120 years old, and read the Bible three times through a year, Every year in your lifetime being saved, you're still not going to know the Bible. You're going to know a lot. You'll learn one day what fully baptism will mean. You will learn full. Listen, right now, if you're newly saved, you don't know what really being saved is. You have not comprehended of what being saved, what God has done for you. Wait till you learn the riches and the glories of all the promises that God has for you now that you're saved. All the opportunities that God will give you. All the things that God will show you as you grow into a proper Christian young man or lady. Wait! It's, man, listen, it's a glorious great time to be a Christian. And right now you're just starting out. There's a lot more. And all I can say is keep reading, keep praying, keep going, keep doing what the Lord says for you to do. And there'll be times of trouble. There'll be hard times. But keep on. Keep up the fight. Read Second Timothy chapter 4. Get that into your heart. Don't be a demon. The Christian's greatest problem is not usually so much a lack of Bible knowledge, although there is always much more to learn. The Christian's biggest problem is normally that he is not obeying what he already knows he should be doing. You know you're not supposed to be doing that. So what do you do? You keep on doing it, you keep on doing it, and you know what's wrong. As baptism, if you know now that you're supposed to be baptized, are you going to obey God and get baptized? Or are you going to keep on putting it off? Well, Brother Hayward, I want to be baptized. I want to do what you told me to do. I have followed you in these things. I want to believe the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to do what the Bible says. My preacher won't, won't let me do it. He still said, then get out of that church. 
Get in a church that believes in the word and does what the word says to do. I've already told you the reasons why they don't do it. And I've already told you what the Bible says to do. Okay, review. A believer comes before being baptized. Here's the order. Preaching, believing, baptized. A person who believes pre Peter's preaching were baptized the same day. <coughs> oh, bless you. Thank you. Saul was baptized three days after he was saved. I was baptized seven. The jailer was saved and baptized that same night. A person should get baptized as soon as possible after he gets saved. Again, I gave you the illustration of men in jail. What, what needed to be done for them to be baptized? It could have been done that night. It could have been done that same day. The, the, the preacher had to get permission from the jail. He had to go down to the store and buy the pool. And then he had to arrange for a time and date for them to bring all that stuff in. There was a there was an opportunity that could not been followed right away that can only been followed by man and rules and regulations and the Bible says you're to follow rules and regulations so there are certain times listen you may be in a drought and there is no water you may not be in a church yet you may not have found the proper church yet don't go dunk yourself. And in case of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, John the Baptist did not put off their baptism. He did not baptize them because he wanted to see for sure that they truly repented. He wanted to see the fruits thereof because he was already baptizing multitudes of multitudes of people who were confessing their sins and doing right. And when a child is old enough to believe from the preaching and got saved, then you baptize that child. You just make sure and talk with that child that that child is truly saved. Then if that child is saved, then you baptize him. Now next week, we'll get into who. And I'm going to tell you right now, I have been in so many churches, and we're, I'm going to kick some preachers on who should be doing a baptism and how it should be done. And we'll close for now.